Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. Thanks for joining us uh, for joining all this event about turning cows into useful data through BI in the logistics of your supply chain. Thank you so much for joining here. I'm Sebastian. Um, I work with the with the marketing team in Grid company. And here we are with a new webinar talking about uh, all related about business intelligence in the supply chain and in the logistics. Thank you so much for joining again. And here we are with Andres. He's going to talk about all related um, of this topic. And if you can start, Andres, thank you so much for joining. OK, thank you, Sebastian. OK, so we are going to talk about turning chaos into actionable data. Uh, the first uh, the first question or what uh, what uh, it seems to be the, the most common issue is that uh, what's the difference between data analytics and business intelligence? Um, because uh, there are people who treat them interchangeably, talk about them as if they were the same, but we are going to see that there are certain differences. In the first place, uh, when we talk about data analytics, uh, we are referring to doing what is necessary, what it takes to extract conclusions, insights, useful information from the data. This is a gigantic area where all kinds of activities and all kinds of tools uh, have place, where business intelligence is one of them. Okay, so um, within data analytics, there are also different approaches, different uh, ways, to, uh, uh, different uh, focus to analysis, um, so uh, we are talking about the script tech analytics uh, and as its name says, it describes the data, it tells us, for example, how frequent uh, events occur, which is the highest value, which is the lowest, uh, which is the average and so on. We can tell when we have a specific value, if it is above or below the average, which is pretty useful. Um, in conclusion, this type of analysis gives us context to compare and understand the data. We also have retrospective analytics, which focuses on answering the question, what happened? Uh, it, it may seem like a very simple thing, but many times we rely on perceptions. So uh, the idea is not only to have perceptions, we don't rely only on those, uh, but also we have data. So we should support uh, those perceptions uh, with data or, or refute those perceptions uh, uh, with data. So this type of analysis focus on discovering with data what happened in the past, okay, uh, about, about the facts, discovering the facts. We also have uh, the diagnostics analytics, uh, which tries to answer the question, why did it happen? To try to identify what, what were the causes. On the other hand, we have the prospective analysis, Okay, uh, which, uh, as its name suggests, is responsible for answering the question, what will happen? Uh, or better even, what is most likely to happen? Okay, we are not, uh, we are not fortune tellers in here. So uh, we, are, uh, we, we also have uh, pres prescriptive analytics, which is the one that answers the question, what should we do? And there is also the preventive analytics, uh, which tells us, what we can do to avoid an underside uh, result um, as it is perceived to, to be possible, a, a possible outcome in the future. So uh, it is, a, a, it is a, a close component to prescriptive analytics as well. So um, in the case of the first three approaches, which are these, um, we have the data analytics, uh, we are counting on data, of what was already happened, which are facts, okay? Meanwhile, the last three approaches work with projections, okay? Uh, meaning that uh, it, we are talking about the future. These projections are obviously not riddles. Uh, it is not a uh, fortune telling. Uh, those are rather projections based, based on what happened in the past. Behavior patterns of the market, of our production chain, our logistics chain, uh, what may be uh, repeated in the future. Th those are the kind of facts that uh, help us to, to, uh, to project the future, okay? This is the basis to be able to project what is going to happen, what is most likely to happen, okay? 
Uh, taking this into account, when we talk about business intelligence, we find that it is a subset of data, uh, data analytics, which uh, works with descriptive analytics, with retrospective analytics and diagnostic analytics. Okay. And meanwhile, data science uh, is another subset, another uh, uh, different subset of data analytics, which uh, works with prospective analytics and prescriptive analytics. Okay, so uh, this is a, uh, and, and as you can see, there is a, a small overlap in here, uh, and that is not uncommon because uh, business intelligence uh, is such a huge uh, area uh, with so many activities and tools, uh, and it's also data data science. So uh, in time, they they are having some things in, in common. They they are inevitably uh, having these activities uh, that are the same uh, for both of them. So the, this uh, separation, this barrier between them, uh, separating them, is uh, uh, it's in time getting more blurry, okay? It is not a, a, a rigid, a rigid thing. And I think in the future, uh, it's more likely that uh, that uh, overlapping is going to, to grow. OK, so uh, that is, is not uncommon to hear about uh, some methods or some activities uh, proper of uh, uh, business intelligence that are being used in data science and vice versa. OK, so um, let's talk about business analytics versus business intelligence. As you can see, uh, business intelligence uh, is a subset of data analytics. But uh, what makes it special is that data is a, a kind of data analytics focused on KPIs, OKRs, metrics, and everything that move the gauge of the business. Okay, meaning that uh, these are very, very business specific metrics. Okay, and and uh, it is important to have those that are really uh, engaged. On, on what is meaningful, what is more important for the business. For example, if we have a metric uh, such as um, the, the size of our fleet, of our, of our truck fleet, uh, it is important to, to know how many trucks we have, but uh, it depends on the kind of company, uh, if that is a critical metric or not. For example, if we are um, um, transportation company which works uh, moving cargo in, in, on land. Obviously, it is important to have to know how many trucks we have in service. Because, uh, if, for example, if uh, half of them are in maintenance, then uh, our uh, capacity to uh, to to provide our services for our clients will be hindered. Um, so it, it is very important. However, if we are a manufacturer. Maybe having trucks, it, it, it's okay, it, it's good, but it is not that critical. So uh, in, in the first case, uh, this is a, a really, really important, important metric, but in the second one, not so much. Okay, That's the kind of difference that we have to, uh, to deal with when we are working with business intelligence. Uh, on the other hand, uh, business intelligence, uh, specifically in supply chain, uh, works out with all kinds of metrics, but uh, uh, since we are focusing on supply chain and logistics, uh, all it is important for this, this industry boils down to two specific metrics, which are costs and lead times. So everything that is related to cost and lead times, it's more likely uh, in the context of uh, supply chain and logistics to, to be very important for business intelligence. Okay. So uh, let's talk about the differences, or what 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 is what is in what have in common, uh, or what separates business intelligence from data science. Uh, again, this is not uh, this is not um, some uh, force jacket. It is not something that is it's written in stone. It is evolving every day. So uh, it is it possible that in the future um, they are more alike than uh, they are today. Okay. But uh, at this point, there are some differences and it is important for you to, to, to understand them. So when some consultant is, is trying to, to sell you their services, you know wh what is uh, the, the most likely outcome 
or what to expect to manage your expectations about uh, a project based on business intelligence or data science. So uh, specifically uh, talking about business intelligence, we have uh, we, we focus on, on what questions. Uh, basically, what happened? What decisions we need to make? What data we need to inform those decisions? OK, so again, we are not dealing only with perceptions. Perceptions are important and they have a place, but uh, we are trying to to make decisions based on data. So uh, it is important to identify what are the facts, what the data says about what happened. Uh, so those are those are the most important questions that are, are being answered by business intelligence. And the focus, they focus on retrospective, diagnostic and descriptive analytics. As, uh, as uh, we discussed earlier, a uh, retrospective uh, it talks about what happened. Diagnostics is about uh, why, why that, that happened. And descriptive analytics um, help us to, to describe the context, to understand the context of what, uh, uh, where we are right now. Okay. The most likely deliverables are reports, KPIs, trends, uh, and most likely we are going to see them in, in dashboards. It is the, the, the most common outcome of, of these kind of, of projects. The tools, static and compar comparative processes, and the source, uh, typically the source are carefully curated data sources. And when we say they uh, carefully curated, we mean that there is a, a work, uh, uh, sometimes a, a very, very uh, extensive work that needs to be done to the data before it can be useful for this kind of project. And, and uh, there is a, a, an inside joke in, in this business, uh, in, in business intelligence and data science, uh, that says that 80% uh, of the time uh, we spend preparing the data uh, and only the 20% the of, of that time is spent on the more glamorous side of uh, working on models and, and, and trying to make projections. Okay, so this is, this is very important because uh, most likely the data isn't ready for, for being used on analytics. So uh, that's why we, we are talking about uh, curated data. And, and that means that uh, when we have, for example, if we have uh, those, uh, so some data that uh, is, uh, or some value that it is uh, blatantly on a layer, uh, then we need to take care of it, okay? This is not cherry picking in order to, to, to doctor the, the results that we are getting. But uh, on the contrary, uh, we try to, uh, to, to take away everything that it may distract us of the main concern, okay? So uh, we try to deal with those, with those uh, outliers, with errors, uh, with uh, atypical information, so we can focus on what is typical, what, what, uh, what supports a trend what may, may help us to understand what is happening in the market uh, with the customers uh, and with our, our internal processes, okay? Uh, and another another uh, attribute of these, these data sources are they are mostly structured. When I say structured, I mean that there is a, there are um, entities in the data that are, 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 are constant, are stable, for example, if you have an invoice, typically an invoice, uh, it's always the same in your system. Uh, they have the same attributes. It, they, it has most likely a sequence number. It has a, a date. It has um, uh, the, the ID of the customer. It has a, a, a due date. Uh, it has a, the amount, of course. Uh, sometimes it has even the the, the currency in, in which the value is. So um, those are our stable stable attributes that we have. So when we try to represent that in a system, typically we are using um, a relational database such as Oracle or or Postgres or uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server. And, and that, that kind of, of systems uh, on not unlikely, uh, it is not uncommon to have even uh, Excel spreadsheets. It is even more common that, that we might think. 
So uh, that is the kind of, of data that we are uh, used to deal with uh, when we are uh, working with business intelligence. Okay. Uh, and finally, the, the aim. The, uh, every every process uh, in business intelligence, every project in business intelligence aims to one single version of the truth, meaning that we try to uh, to, to to reconcile uh, different different data sources that are basically talking about the same. So uh, when we uh, are asking questions about your inventory to to, to the account accounting uh, guys. Uh, we should have the same the same value if we are talking to uh, the warehouse guys okay so if not there is something that is is out of sequence in here but uh, when we are trying to to integrate all the data in one single uh, system uh, the the aim is to have one single version of the truth so when we are talking about the the, the uh, what, what is uh, our inventory what is our stock then uh, we need to have a uh, one single value OK, the right value uh, uh, as, as it means. OK, so uh, this is uh, what uh, what uh, makes a special business intelligence uh, about data science. The questions uh, that data science works with uh, are why, what will happen, what is most likely to happen and what should we do at this point? Uh, the focus uh, are on obviously predictive, prescriptive and preventative analytics. Uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, prescriptive analytics uh, means uh, that we are talking about uh, what we should do to, 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 to achieve a goal, to, to have an outcome, um, uh, while preventative analytics means what we need to do in order to avoid an undesi um, um, undesired uh, outcome. So uh, they are related, but they are not the same. Uh, about the deliverables, uh, typically are models, regression models, most likely uh, uh, machine learning models, uh, patterns, uh, correlations, recommendations. So it, it is not uh, that easy to to find that uh, in dashboards. Okay, but there are some some ways to to bring all these conclusions or all these deliverables. Uh, in a way that could be understood, that could be uh, handled by the decision makers. Okay, uh, about the tools, uh, they work with experimentation, visualization, and exploratory processes. Um, as the, its name suggests, data science uh, science is not uh, is not about a building with a method, which should be the the way on engineering or uh, in uh, for 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 that sake in business intelligence, uh, it is not that uh, a stable process. It is more a discovery process where we have uh, uh, some some data, some uh, initial data. We form an, a hypothesis, then we uh, create experiments. We run those experiments to um, to uh, corroborate or to refute those uh, hypotheses, and then we learn what ne what's next. OK, uh, we, we form another uh, hypothesis and then uh, we, we do the same and so on. So uh, this is a, an exploratory process where we are not uh, uh, sure what we are going to, to find uh, and it is not sure uh, how long it is going to take to get a, a, an actionable answer. However, the rewards are are really, really, really good. So uh, it is something that uh, it's worth uh, considering. Okay, so uh, that's why we we work with experimentation, visualization, exploratory processes because we are exploring. We are trying to to find uh, what might be useful, what what may not. But even when we have a, a, a negative uh, result, it is still a result, and uh, it says that uh, we shouldn't uh, take that road. Uh, and maybe that leads us to a, a, a more fruitful uh, path uh, on in other direction. Okay. Uh, about the source, <laughs> unlikely the business intelligence, the data sources in this case are multiple formats, and, uh, and they are uh, they could be structured or unstructured. So what I mean with unstructured. Uh, unlike the other case when we have tables with stable uh, columns where 
all the all the records in a table they have the same columns and all, all those uh, columns have the same data type in this case uh, it could not be the case uh, we could we could have for example uh, we could have uh, emails e email messages so uh, the, okay an email message it may have a date may have a, a, a sender may have a, a receipt a, a subject and the content but uh, the content could be anything so uh, it, we are not uh, even sure that uh, if there is some structure in the content so uh, it is it is a it is a, a kind of a, an adventure to try to find a useful data in there however uh, if we have enough data uh, it is possible to try to find some patterns and to identify inside the, the content of the email we can uh, try to identify some some uh, some markers that uh, help you to uh, to understand what kind of message is what might it be about and basically this is this is the the, the process that uh, spam filters use to identify to to try to figure out if this this uh, email uh, it's a legitimate uh, uh, message from a valid uh, sender or it is most likely to be spam okay so it, it can be done uh, it is not that easy but it can be done so uh, this, this is what what i mean with uh, I, i'm talking about unstructured data uh, for example we have also uh, the json files uh, xml files uh, we have uh, we have uh, tweets for example uh, we can uh, try to to understand what people are saying about our company based on on what uh, they are posting on instagram um, and and those are, are messages that are are unstructured they they have they might have video they might have pictures they might have a uh, text but uh, they are not as uh, as easy to uh, to process as an email for example so the, this is the kind of, of things that uh, we need to deal with when we are working uh, on these cases and uh, finally the aim is not to have a, a single version of the truth which is the one from uh, business intelligence but instead we are aiming to have good enough probabilities so if we are, uh, for example, if we are trying to uh, understand, OK, if is this uh, is this shipment, for example, going to 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 be in time uh, to reach its destination on time? Uh, that is a, a, a complex question that uh, which answer uh, relies on uh, several, several factors. But uh, we can we can say okay if the, the for example if, if we are uh, 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 sending data over the ocean uh, in a boat uh, then uh, if the the uh, expected uh, time of arrival of that boat is uh, uh, is before the scheduled one then you can say okay it is it is likely uh, to 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 be there earlier. Okay, but uh, if it is it is not uh, it is the same, and, and that's the only data that you have, hmm, then uh, it is not that easy to to make a, a good assumption about that. So uh, we need more data in in that case. So uh, we we can say okay, we have the estimated time of arrival uh, from the, the captain of the boat, but if we have uh, data about how how busy is the destination port. Hey, they, 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 then we have more data to deal with. If you also have uh, what are uh, the, the, the climate, the climate conditions uh, on, on the path of that boat, then you can, you can uh, have also say, OK, we have even more data. If we have, for example, a, a, a storm, a very powerful storm on the path of the boat, then it is more likely that the boat needs to to take a detour uh, to take a different route uh, in order to uh, to arrive to the, to its destination so in, in that case we cannot be sure about uh, well, how, when it is going to to arrive finally but we have a, a good chance to to identify if it is going to uh, arrive on time or not okay 
So this, this is the kind of, of things that we that we try to to, to achieve in the year. Uh, it is not 100% sure because uh, we are not fortune tellers, uh, but uh, we can uh, based on the data available uh, and the the patterns that we have uh, observed in the past, then we can uh, we can make assumptions and we can pro make projections about what is likely to happen. Okay, so when we have uh, a, a, a model that makes uh, predictions with 80% uh, um, uh, or 75% of uh, probability uh, of, of being being right, th this is a good a good outcome. Okay, it is not perfect, but uh, it, it it is able to do uh, a, a very good job uh, using uh, tons of data and in a really really short time. So. Uh, the, the 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 ratio between the 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 good outcome and the cost could be a a, a, a decision that makes sense for most companies. Okay, so this is this is a what what is it we are dealing with when we talk about data science projects. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, now about um, the steps to implement a BI project in supply chain and logistics. So the first the first uh, step. Uh, most likely is to understand the business because uh, not because we are in supply chain and logistics, uh, all companies are the same. OK, uh, it's one thing to be a shipper. It is one thing the, to be a carrier. It's different to be an ocean carrier or an air carrier. Uh, we can be a logistics operators and our needs are different from the previous ones. Or we can be freight forwarders, for example. So uh, it, it is it is different. The, the, the goal of our business is different depending on what kind of company we, we, we have. OK, so it is important to understand that context before starting a, a BI project. Uh, the second step would be to understand the data because we have a automatic uh, GPS logs. We could be we could have a, a TMS transactions. We could have manual records. We could have a purchase orders bills of lading, EDI data from port operators. So there are different kinds of data. And, and uh, those those uh, those records, uh, those streams of data could could uh, come uh, uh, once a day. It could uh, arrive uh, every five seconds. Uh, we could have them uh, electronically. We could have them in uh, for example, in a manual form, uh, we can have physical physical, physical invoices uh, or physical bill of ladings that need to be uh, 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 digitalized uh, and turned into PDF files, for example. And, and there are so many, many formats and, and ways to, to, to get data. So it is important to understand what is the origin. If there is a, a human being involved in that, or, uh, or uh, maybe it was uh, a data or it's a record that was generated automatically by the machine. Uh, that, that means that uh, maybe there are some errors uh, or, or there are more likely than in other cases. Uh, and uh, it is, th that is why it's important to understand where, where they, what they are, uh, where they, they, they come from and how they were produced. Okay. Uh, the third step would be prototyping. Uh, we need to, to map the questions to the data available because uh, we can we can we may have some needs. Uh, we need to to for example, uh, we need to to know um, uh, are we going to be able to 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 match uh, to to meet the the demand of our products? Then uh, to in order to to answer that, we are going to need data. If we don't have that data, we cannot answer that question. So we we face a, here a two possible two possible ways, two possible paths. The first one is to change the question uh, in order to to be able to uh, frame it in a way that we can answer with the available data, or we can have a, a, we can uh, request the, the the missing data so we can uh, be able to answer the question. Okay. Most likely, we are using both both uh, both scenarios uh, in order to uh, to have more data, maybe to 
to ask for our providers to to uh, to give us the more data or more accurate data or uh, or for example if they usually provides a uh, bills of lading in a, in a in a physical format then we can ask them okay no uh, I please send them in at least in a pdf format or uh, or send them uh, through an xml uh, file for example that way it is easier for us to to process that data and to to uh, to get to answer the questions okay so basically it, this is the, the prototyping about uh, to try to to match the, the expectations what the, the the business needs and what data we have in order to to answer those questions okay and uh, uh, basically in this in this step we uh, typically uh, try to figure out what kind of visualization are going to use or what kind of the delivery uh, method we are going to use uh, to to uh, to get that that information those insights uh, those conclusions in the hands of the decision makers okay the fourth step would be uh, to build or extend a data warehouse uh, because uh, data sources uh, should be separated from transactional systems why I say that? Because, uh, okay, when we have a transactional system, uh, we 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 mean uh, this is the the the, the system. It is the 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 the, the set of uh, computers, uh, the databases, servers, uh, and and software that is uh, in charge of running the business. Okay, so if for example we have um, we have an airport. Uh, then the transactional system would be uh, the the control tower uh, software. Uh, so it is important that it is running smoothly, that nothing uh, hinders its ability to uh, to route uh, airplanes going from and out or from the airport, because uh, that's that's kind of their business. So uh, that's why we need to separate the, that that data from the data that we are using from uh, our, um, our our business intelligence system because uh, we need to to be to uh, to use intensively uh, all the the resources of the of the system so if we are uh, doing a, a very very heavy uh, query on the on the data in order to to find out a pattern or to build a a, a year report uh, it would it wouldn't be nice to to have to done that uh, on the transactional system because uh, in the case of, of the of the the, the airport uh, it could uh, 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 have a, a bad impact on the performance of of the systems uh, so and we don't we we don't want that we want uh, the, the airplanes to be able to to run smoothly uh, through the the to the airport so uh, it, it is better to have these separated on the other hand uh, another reason to do that is because um, the transactional system uh, is meant to work is organized in a way that uh, makes sense for the system uh, meaning that for example if we are uh, tracking uh, tracking airplanes or tracking uh, boats then most likely we are going to record uh, every five seconds the position uh, or the, the coordinates of that or that airplane or that vessel, uh, the direction it is going, the the, the speed uh, over the ground, uh, and that kind of data every five seconds. Tan, 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 tan. So uh, it makes sense for that system because they need to track in real time what what is going on. However, if if we want to, to know, OK, uh, what uh, uh, what uh, what flights or what uh, ocean voyages uh, arrive on time, that is kind of a question that doesn't need that level of detail. So uh, instead, we can just uh, take all those all those uh, separate records all those uh, thousands and thousands of records that describe the the route uh, followed by a vessel and then we we can uh, just uh, come to the conclusion what time it uh, departed from the the the, or, the origin uh, the origin port or the origin airport 
and what time it, it arrived to the final destination. That's it. And, and then that's why, uh, in that way, we can uh, just have a very, very uh, summarized version of that data uh, uh, just for, for the sake of answer the question that is needed. OK, of course, the, the, the very detailed data is still present in the transactional system, but uh, in our business intelligence uh, data warehouse, we organize as in a warehouse, we organize the data in a way that makes sense for the answers that we need to, to get from the system. OK, so uh, that, that's why we organize the data. We make summarizations. We are make aggregations that make sense for, for, that, for, that, for the, that part. Uh, and for, exa for example, if we need to know uh, what, uh, how, many, uh, how many planes uh, arrived uh, in, in a single day, then we can just make the computation. Uh, we can count, oh, OK, uh, if, if today is 16th of November. Then we are going to find out how many, how many planes they were and just count of them. And when you have the, that, that number, then we can store it in a, in a, uh, in a table and that's it. We, we just have that. So when we uh, need to figure out uh, what, uh, what was the, the behavior of the, uh, of the, the airport uh, uh, through the month, then we don't need to go uh, one by one to count one by one because we already have uh, that that summarized uh, in by, by day. So uh, then we can we can take that that pre pre computed result and, and make a much faster query that we can display uh, to the decision makers. Okay, so that's that's kind of the the way that, that we work uh, in, in this case. Uh, so the fifth, the fifth step is to build or extend the ETL processes. Uh, when we are uh, dealing with a data warehouse, most or, or for that sake, even when we don't have a warehouse, but we have different, different data sources that are not integrated in a single system, uh, most likely we need to, to deal with providers uh, or with customers that uh, they, are, they have data of their own. And if we want to have a 360, uh, 360 degrees view uh, of our, our, our surroundings in order to make sense of what is, what, what is happening, what is going to happen, then uh, most likely we need to do integrations. So uh, to do integrations, uh, the typical uh, approach is to use ETL uh, tools. ETL stands for uh, extract, uh, extraction, um, uh, transformation and load of data. So uh, if we have, for example, if we have um, the post service, and the post service is, is saying, OK, there is some uh, some shipments that are, go are going your way, uh, then maybe you need to interface with them through an API and to get data from them uh, to process in your system and then to, to feed uh, your BI, uh, your BI system. Uh, or if you need to to uh, to ingest uh, invoices or bills of lading, then uh, if we have this this kind of uh, of PDF files uh, or all kind of data that we need to deal with, then uh, they need to be uh, in some way be transformed uh, in a way that could be understood by the system, and then to to be to be taken into into the system. So that, that's why we, we are, we're talking about extraction, transformation, and loading in the system. And, and those, those processes, uh, they need uh, to take uh, account, to take into account um, problems, uh, business rules, uh, and, and as I, I mentioned earlier, to, uh, uh, to deal with uh, outliers, to deal with errors. So uh, this is, this is a, a very, very important part of the, of the project. Uh, the sixth step would be to build metrics and dashboards. So when we already have the, all the data that we need in the format that we need, and it has been curated in a way that we can trust it, uh, then we, we, we build the metrics. We, we try to uh, apply all the formulas, uh, all the business rules that we have discovered, that we have designed in order to answer the questions. 
and then we uh, put all of it uh, to be to be consumed by the customers, uh, by the decision makers on dashboards, which is the, the most likely way to do it. Of course, uh, we can we can also send emails, we can send uh, uh, printed reports, we can uh, do all all kind of things uh, depending on what makes sense for the organization. But uh, again, the the most likely scenario or the most common scenario is to have dashboards that we put in front of the decision makers, uh, so they can they can see what what is happening and they can interact with uh, with reports. Uh, and with with graphs, so uh, they can understand uh, how uh, how the, the the cargo is flowing, how the processes are behaving, uh, how this, the the suppliers are are behaving. So uh, that's that's the importance of that part. And finally, we have to deploy and adjust. Uh, we why we don't talk about just deploy because uh, after the system uh, the, the data. Uh, data analytics or business intelligence uh, process uh, has been deployed, it most likely need to be adjusted because uh, once the, the, the people uh, in charge of the, the decisions, they have finally, they have uh, the data, then they, they understand, they, they, they gain an understanding of what is going on. And that uh, can uh, maybe make them uh, shape in a different way what they would like to know about the system, about about how the, the, the company is 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 behaving. OK, so uh, on, on, of course, it, it may be that, uh, also be some errors and uh, maybe some assumptions that are not holding uh, in, in the real world. So uh, it, it is a, na a natural process to make adjustments uh, before the uh, after the deploying. OK. So that that's why uh, it is um, a kind of a cyclical process uh, at, at the end of the of this uh, project. OK, and uh, finally, we're going to talk about the benefits of business intelligence and data science in supply chain. Uh, we, we can separate these benefits into two phases. OK, so when we uh, embark on a, on a, on these kind of projects, uh, we can uh, start with the first phase, which uh, the benefits are to map your data and your processes. Then we can understand, we can have a, a, a real version of what is going on in the company. We can make sense of the data with visualizations because we can have data. We can have rows and rows of, of data in a spreadsheet, but it not necessarily uh, means anything to to uh, the, to um, from a layman perspective, maybe if you are a very very uh, savvy accountant, then you can in your head you you can make sense uh, of what is going on just looking at the numbers. But for a, an everyday person, it is not that easy. So visualizations really help uh, to put into in perspective uh, the data that we are seeing uh, on a screen. Uh, all, another benefit is to discover outliers and trends, as I said before, because uh, in, when when we are uh, aware of the kind of distribution that we have, uh, and when we mean distribution, I mean when we have tons of data, uh, the most likely uh, scenario is that uh, when we try to map or try to to this, to, to to put a uh, the, the the values on that data uh, in a in a line in in a in a quadrant, then uh, the most likely distribution would be a a, a bell a bell shape, uh, that is the the Gaussian uh, bell shape, and uh, that means that when we have uh, all kinds of uh, of data, um, the most common value is going to be in the center and the less likely values or less common values are going to be on the edges, on the skirts of, of that of that bell shape. So um, when we have that kind of distribution, then we can make assumptions. We can we can uh, uh, do some static statistical magic in order to to understand better the data. But uh, when we have outliers, then uh, or, or, or maybe because we have the, that kind of a behavior, we can more 
easily spot outliers and to, to identify what is a, what is not behaving as it should. Okay, when we have something that uh, it's a, it's a very odd, then we can identify it. Uh, we are not making sense or, or we are not aware of, of the distribution. May we not be able to identify th those outliers and then uh, we could miss uh, those uh, those problems. So it is important to understand the data and to, to have uh, this, uh, this, this uh, in a visual way uh, so uh, ev ev everyone uh, in the organization could understand easily when uh, something is, is, is weird, when something is not uh, as it should. Okay. Um, oh, another benefit, we can implement business rules to support data-driven decision-making. So uh, we can, uh, based on the data, we can uh, uh, automatically identify what's what's going on and and when uh, something uh, it's worth of the attention of the of the decision makers we can uh, make it explicit for them and and the, the the most important one to tell the whole story of each shipment from start to final delivery it, this is a, a kind of the holy grail of, of, of these kind of projects because uh, in, in, especially in supply chain and logistics uh, we have a very a very uh, ancient problem and it is that uh, the, the information is fragmented uh, the different players in the supply chain they have their their uh, their turf uh, and and they they have uh, they, they, they they treat it like uh, like column in the lord of the rings it is my precious and they they don't want to to share that with the, with the rest uh, i'm exaggerating, exaggerating obviously but uh, it is not that that far from from the from the reality so uh, it is it is important to to try to to communicate with each other in in this in this chain so we can we can participate on on what is important what is relevant uh, from the information that the, the my counterparts in the supply chain process uh, um, they, they have what is relevant for me then uh, I, in, in in the same kind we can share uh, what's relevant for them so uh, everyone has uh, the, the the information they need in order to make sense of the whole of the whole, whole process the, the whole uh, the whole story so uh, if we manage to do that then we can tell the whole story and then to understand uh, what is going on and where we can make adjustments which uh, takes us to the second phase once we are, are, are done with the first first phase and we really have uh, curated data, we have data sources flowing in, we are, have make, made sense of the data and uh, the decision makers are understanding what is going on, then we can, we can make uh, some additional uh, work on tracking great times in, spend, in shipment stages, such as customs, transshipments, truck transport. Uh, obviously, uh, providing that we have access to that, that data in not necessarily in real time, but if we could be in real time or near time, that could be uh, even better. OK, but if not, uh, then uh, anyway, we can use that data to to try to. Um, um, to, to give scores to providers, uh, so if we uh, look at the history and we say hmm, that port uh, is, 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 uh, is cheaper than the other ones, but they have a, a history of uh, it, they in average it takes five days uh, to to take the, the 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 cargo from that port from the time when when it arrives in the vessel from the time uh, to the time when the the truck is able to 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 pick it up. So five days mm, is not that good. But if we have another port close by that uh, it's a little bit uh, more expensive but it takes two days maybe for you that is a, a, a good uh, a good decision that, that could be a, a, an option a good option so uh, um, even when we don't have uh, that information in real time it could be useful to, to make decisions okay uh, another benefit shipments forecasts uh, in and in this case we can we can uh, prevent or, or we can uh, foresee uh, what uh, the the shipment needs would be. What when my customers 
uh, are going to need my, my products. Uh, we got another benefit, prioritize airports by risk profiles. Um, the same, if we know by history that uh, that airport uh, is not is not that good, uh, then we can use another one uh, to, to, to route our cargo that way. Uh, another benefit, we can predict different scenarios with different routes, seasons, providers, and prioritize the most likely outcomes. Uh, we can also identify inefficiencies, which uh, help us to, to cut costs, uh, or we can also optimize, in, uh, optimize efficiencies. Uh, we can help to plan demand logistics in order to, 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 take, uh, to see things in, in, in advance. Uh, for example, if we have a, a, one, one example of this is that, uh, for example, if we have uh, uh, a cargo coming uh, by boat and we know that uh, this boat is, is coming uh, two, days, uh, uh, two, two days ahead its schedule, uh, then uh, depending on how, how earlier you learn that, then you can, uh, for example, you can change uh, the day where the truck uh, that is supposed to pick up the cargo at the port uh, is going to arrive, okay? Because if you don't that, if you don't do that, um, we may be, uh, May, may need to, to pay an extra charge for uh, uh, to, to store the cargo in the port. So those, those the mortgage fees uh, are, uh, are they, they tend to be expensive. So if you don't, don't know that in time, then uh, it is it could be a problem. Um, so uh, uh, when you know that in in advance, this is a good thing. You, you can react. We can uh, get ahead of the situation. Okay. Uh, another benefit: we can identify bottlenecks. We can uh, interrupt ongoing shipments due to temperature excursions. This is a, an interesting one. For example, if you have uh, vaccines, or we have, uh, or we have a, a fish, something like that. Uh, some cargo that is sensitive to temperature uh, changes, temperature disruptions. So uh, if we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, exotic fish coming from Thailand uh, from uh, to America, then uh, and in half they have the, the way, uh, let's say uh, in, in India, we learned that uh, the the there, it was a temperature excursion. It was a, a, a temperature that was above the maximum uh, allowed for that kind of, of cargo, that the cargo is ruined. So uh, at that point, if you learn that in on time, then you at least can uh, prevent the cargo from uh, reaching its destination. And at least you can save uh, half of the, of, of the, of the trip. Uh, uh, at the cost of, of transporting a, a cargo that is, is useful at destination. So uh, this is something that uh, we can we can do if we are able to access the, the data, that kind of data in real time, or at least in near time. Um, and it, it is especially important when we have uh, these, um, these voyages uh, through ocean, uh, which takes uh, several days or even weeks. So uh, in that in those cases, it makes more, much more sense. Um, and finally, I, I, another of the of the many many outcomes and many benefits that we can have is the automate alerts. So, if, for example, if we have a, if we are monitoring the the, the the fuel fuel prices, and we are uh, having the, having uh, some cargo coming from. Uh, let's say Mexico to the United States, then uh, in that case we can say, uh, okay, for me as a as a as a truck driver, it makes more sense to to fuel my truck uh, uh, on the side of the of the of the border that where the the fuel is cheaper. Okay, so if we know, we learn that the the price of the fuel uh, in the United States uh, has been uh, uh, it's, it's higher, 
then we can then with the, the, the appropriate alert, then we can uh, try to uh, to refuel uh, the truck before going uh, through the border or, or the, the other way around. It also works uh, in both ways. So uh, these, those are the, the kind of things that we can we can uh, do uh, when we learn about the, the business rules, when we have information uh, in, in real time or near time uh, to uh, be able to react uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the different scenarios that we have. Uh, okay, so I think uh, our, our time is ending. So um, I don't know if you have uh, any questions so far. 